Mr. Imtiazur Rahman, CEO and Whole Time Director. Mr. Surujit Saha, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Vinay Lakotia, Head Operations. And Mr. Sandeep Samsi, Head Investor Relations and Corporate Communications. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made into today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Please note the disclaimer mentioning this risk and uncertainties are on the disclaimer side of the investor presentation that, that has been shared earlier. I will now hand over the conference to Mr. Imtiazur Rahman for opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Fazan, and good afternoon to all of you. I welcome all of you to the earnings call for the quarter and the financial year 2022. And I thank you for joining us to discuss the financial and operating performance of UTIMC, which is having a group AUM of 13.49 lakh crores. I have with me my colleagues, Mr. Surajit Zaha, Mr. Vinayal Lakodia, and Mr. Sandeep Samsi. Friends, in the last quarter, in spite of various challenges and the global development, the business continued with full momentum and our economy continues to grow. The Indian equity market faced volatility due to the international development and its resultant impact on global indices. However, both the benchmark indices closed about 0.6% higher during this quarter or at the end of the quarter. The Sensex as of 31st March 2022, it stood at 58,568 points, and Nifty stood at 17,464 points. The Indian mutual fund industry witnessed an impressive, impressive growth in the last year. The country's AUM to GDP ratio is all-time high of 15.9% in financial year 2022 driven by increasing financial awareness and ease of access to investing in mutual funds through various platforms. The industry witnessed a surge in the contribution from retail investors, resulting in good support to the market. The total number of folios for the industry as on 31st March 2022 stood at 12.95 crore registering a growth of 7.7% during the quarter and a robust 32.4% on a yearly basis. The quarterly average AUM for the Indian mutual fund industry stood at 38.38 lakh crore as of 31st March 2022, registering a growth of 19.5% during the year. Monthly SIP contributions reached at all-time high of rupees 12,300 crores. The SIP AUM for the industry rose to rupees 5.76 lakh crores as of 31st March 2022, registering a growth of about 2% compared to the last quarter. The total number of SIP accounts as on 31st March 2022 were 5.27 crores. Now I will request my colleague, Mr. Vinay Lakotia, to share with you about UTI mutual fund performance. Over to you, Vinay. Thank you. Uh, just to highlight with respect to the UTI mutual fund operations, we are pleased to inform you that for the second consecutive year, UTI mutual fund has continued to grow at a rate higher than the industry growth rate. Uh, the UTI mutual fund quarterly average AUM for the quarter ended March 2022 to that 2.23 lakh crore, registering a growth rate of 22.4% or almost 41,000 crore from March quarter ended 2021 number of 1.82 lakh crore. Uh, during the same period, mutual fund industry AUM grew by 19.5%, uh, 
as a result our market share on a quarterly average aum basis increased by almost around 13 basis points from 5.70% for the quarter end in march 2021 to 5.83% for the quarter end in march 2022 On a closing AUM basis as well, our market shares have actually increased by almost around 23 basis points during the financial year 2021-22, from 5.63 percent as on 31st March 2021 to 5.86 percent as on 31st March 2022. Uh, we are also pleased to inform you that our equity quarterly average market share has actually increased. Uh, from 5.15 or 15% for the quarter end in March 2021 to 5.17% uh, during the quarter end in March 2022 uh, we have witnessed an upswing in our aum and net sales for our equity oriented hybrid and the etf categories of the fund the equity uh, oriented quarterly average aum for the quarter end in March 2022 to the 69287 crore reg- registering an increase of almost 37% over quarter end in March 2021 number of 50751 crore the quarterly average aum for etf and index fund also recorded a growth rate of almost around 47% uh, during quarter end in March 2021 and 22 For the financial year to, uh, 2021-22, the net sale number has been increasing for ETF mutual fund. The total net inflows recorded across asset class stood at 19,428 crore, as compared to an industry net sale number of 2.47 lakh crore. It implies almost seven. We have recorded almost 7.88 percent of the industry net sale number during the financial year 2021-22. Uh, the net sale number has actually uh, in, improved significantly over the previous year by almost to the tune of around 55%. The equity net inflows for UTI mutual fund amounted to roughly around 5.81% of the industry uh, net inflow number and stood at 8,931 crore as compared to a net out- outflow of 309 crore during the previous financial year. ETF and index fund uh, continue to register an impressive inflows and our net inflows during the financial year uh, 2021-22 stood at 14200 crore almost 10.2% of the industry net flows number the net sales number for our hybrid categories also displayed a turnaround from being uh, net outflows during the last four to five financial years we have recorded a uh, inflow of close to around 570 crore uh, in our hybrid category of the fund during financial year 2021 22 uh, with respect to quarter ended our uh, market share on the gross sales of the industry stood at 9.85% etf and index fund uh, recorded a net inflows of around 3000 uh, 989 crore during quarter ended jan uh, to march Uh, while equity uh, fund recorded a net inflows of close to around 2300 crore uh, d- during the quarter 4 of this particular financial year as a group of em as mr raman explained the total asset under management registered a growth rate of almost around 16.2% and stood at 13.49 lakh crore up against 11.61 lakh crore as on 31st march 2021 Uh, during the last financial year we have added uh, close to around 8.5 lakh folios uh, increasing the our total number of folios from 1.1 crore as on 31st march 2021 to 1.19 crore uh, during the past one year the open ended equity oriented team added close to around 9.2 lakh folios we have done fairly well under the sip book during the financial year our number of sip account rose by almost around 45% taking the number of live sip folios to 21.5 lakh as on march 31st march 2022 our sip aum witness a growth of almost around 32% over the last year uh, and reaching almost around 8000 by 18311 crore as compared to 13914 crore uh, as on 31st march 2021 the sip inflows during the quarter stood at 1489 crore rising 10.1% over the previous quarter 
and almost around 67% was the corresponding quarter last year. The growth in source for UTI mutual fund witnessed uh, under the SIT witnessed a year-on-year -year growth rate of almost around 58% as compared to an industry growth rate of 30% uh, during the same period. Uh, with respect to the weighted average EMC yield, we have been able to charge a weighted average EMC yield of almost around 41 basis points for quarter four of this financial year as well as for the entire financial year as compared to a 38 basis point charge in the previous quarter and uh, and almost around the 44 basis point charge in uh, financial year 2020-21. Uh, with this, I'll hand it over to Surajit to update on the company's uh, financial. UK AMC improved on the back of strong net inflows and judicious cost control measures taken. During the financial year, the company posted a consolidated net profit of 534 crore and a consolidated core net profit of 366 crore. Core pack excludes M2M gain income from sale of investment and other non-operating income as against 194 crore in FI21, reflecting a growth of 88%. There is a growth in the core profitability of UTI Group. UTI MC Limited, core pack of UTI MC Limited, FI22 is 299 crore, reflecting a growth of 61% year on year, whereas the core income is at 910 crore in FI22, is growth of 25%. UTI RSL, AUM of UTI RSL has increased from 21% on closing basis from 166,210 crore to rupees uh, 2 lakh. 1,919 crore. The of UTI RSL is at 42.3 crore, an increase of 1,000%. The reason being the increase in the net TFRDA fee structure from 0.5 bits to 3.5 bits. UTI International, the management fees of UTI International is at 127 crore in FY22 from rupees 65 crore in FY21, an increase of 95%. UTI Capital has made a net loss of 2.21 crore, which is mainly on account of reduction of management fee income due to several exits from various funds. The company has got two approvals from SEBI for launching schemes, hence it is expected that the company will break even in the next two years. The operating profit margin as a percentage of AUM or FI22 was 16 bits as against 12 bits in FI21. The ROE of the company on a consolidated basis is 16% from the full year ended 31st March. The PAC margin stands at 40% for the full year ended 31st March 22. The net worth of the company on a consolidated basis is 3,606 crore as of March 22. The board recommended a final dividend of 21 per share for FY22 as against 17 rupees per share for FI21, amounting to 63.75% of PAT as compared to 61.29% of the PAT FI21. The final dividend for FI22 is subject to the approval of shareholders at the ensuing uh, AGM. I would like to highlight one of the concerns, the employee cost of the group. Employee cost of the group in FI22 is 407 crore as against uh, uh, in, uh, it is an increase of 7%, that is 27 crore, uh, as against the amount of rupees 380 crore in FI21. The increase is largely due to 17 crore of higher provision of variable pay for better performance of the sales and investment team, rupees 2 crore of higher expenses on account of medical expenses, the previous year being the COVID year settlement that will take place, rupees 8 crore due to increase of the fixed pay of the group employees, reflecting an increase of 2.5% of the total employee cost. It may be highlighted that though there is an increase in the fixed pay of employees in the range of 7% on account of the annual increment, the actual impact of 8 crore in terms of percentage of the total employee cost is 2%. This entails a positive impact or a saving of 4.5%, which is on account of the retirement of employees. With this, I will hand over to Sandeep Shamsi. Yes, thank you, Suruji. I would like to share some of the digital initiatives that we have taken. Uh, for providing a better customer experience across our digital assets like our UTI Mutual Fund app, our UTI Buddy app and our website, we are redesigning this and redeveloping this with enhanced user interface and technology upgrades. The design thinking will be mobile first and providing an e-commerce experience to our customers. Uh, this will be accessible to all of the categories of our investors and distributors. Uh, we are working on increasing our digital distribution outreach by partnering with our distributors and third-party 
Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has got disconnected. Request you all to please stay online while we reconnect them. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. The line for the management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, we, uh, I think some of the points have got covered. I will take from uh, point number two. We are working on increasing our digital distribution outreach by partnering with our distributors and third-party portals through API Gateway for onboarding, transaction, and other services. We aim at driving our business goals by developing capabilities for adding customers through display and search marketing and through targeted communication for our investors and distribution partners via multimedia campaigns on email, SMS, WhatsApp, and notifications. For our investors in liquid and overnight fund, we have started a service called as Insta Statement of Account, where we target a turnaround time of around five minutes for providing this service. For our mutual fund distribution partners, we have launched a service called as InstaPay, Insta Brokerage, which aims at commission payment on a turnaround time of five minutes to up to a maximum of 75% of the eligible accrued and payable commission or rupees 50,000, whichever is lower, based on the calculated trail commission on a daily basis. As a knowledge sharing initiative for our investors and partners in a digital format, we have launched Symposia, which is our UTI mutual fund knowledge series, wherein we have so far done five events. Across these events, we have an overall registration of more than 20,000. Uh, with this, I would request Mr. Rahman to... Uh, Thank you, Sandeep. Friends, let me share with you about the performance of subsidiaries. First, UTI International. The AUM of UTI International has increased from Rs. 26,821 crore to 28,974 crore. Our international clients are across 37 countries. They are primarily institutions, pension funds, insurance, bank, and asset managers. One of our flagship funds, the Indian Dynamic Equity Fund, domiciled in Ireland, has an AUM of over $1.2 billion, and it is widely recognized as a best performing fund, one of the best performing funds. UTI International, J. Safrasan Responsible India Fund is an ESG compliant fund and has an AUM of $1.125 million. UTI International has also launched a UTI India Sovereign Bond ETF, which is listed on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. We will be shortly launching our office in Paris. Now the UTI Retirement Solution. UTI Retirement Solution has been managing the NPS corpus for the government and the non-government sectors. UTI RSL has crossed the AUM to 2,1919 crore, and, which has raised, and it has become a very profitable company. We have recently had the services of BCG to help us in designing the business plan for UTI retirement solutions to capture the market in the private sector. We are building our expertise in AIS, through our subsidy UTI Capital. UTI Capital has launched a job too and, and the UTI Multi Opportunity Fund. I'm quite confident this company will do pretty well in the, in the years to come. I would also like to share with you key developments within the company. During the financial year, we sharpened our focus on our people, process, and performance. We took measures to acquire talent and also build our internal talent pool. During the year, we appointed head of sales, deputy head of fixed income, to provide a stewardship for our investment process across asset classes. We elevated our existing human capital in the following roles, chief investment officer, head of equity, head of passive strategies, and head, and head of fixed income research. We believe that these elevations 
we have the we have the right framework to capitalize the growth in different asset classes and enhance performance. During the year, we launched three funds, which generated gross sales of rupees 2,780 crores. We will continue to launch new funds as and when the right opportunity arises. We are working on our ESG journey and have been adhering to best practices. We have adopted a formal stewardship code and a signatory to United Nations Principle for Responsible Investment. I wish to reiterate that we will continue to focus on growing our high yielding assets and as well as our focus will continue to be on our people process and performance. With this, I would like to open the forum for Q&A and thank you very much for joining us during this call. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Kunal Thanvi from Banyan Free Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I had uh, three set of questions. First was on the employee cost. Uh, so last year when you know when we started this year out, uh, we had you know indicated that uh, for FI22 the employee cost will either be same at, at say FI21 level or it was you know expected to go down. But you know, fast forward 12 months, we are seeing an increment in the, in the employee cost worth you know 27 crores uh, for FI22. Now we understand you know there is there are these variable components and the other things that you guys had mentioned, but uh, they were also there in FI21 numbers as well, right? So how should one look at the employee cost from uh, from an absolute number basis? Uh, uh, so will there be actual reduction or it will you know continue to grow the way it is going now? Yeah, I think I have already explained to you the difference between the 407 crore and 380 crore, that is 27 crore difference, right? And going forward, yes, other than the variable component, which is that bonus component, uh, other uh, core employee costs will be coming down. But uh, variable pay, of course, is in a, uh, is in tandem with the growth in business. So that will obviously have uh, will increase or decrease with respect to our business growth and plan. You know, so when we look at say 27 crores of difference compared to last year, 17 crore is the variable. So the remaining yeah. is like just 10 crores left, right, uh, for the entire financial year. So yes, what do you uh, say is that? One minute. The 17 crores in respect of higher provision of variable pay for better performance. Two crores was a one-time cost with respect to the COVID deals which have been settled, and eight crore was due to the fixed pay income increase of the group employees. So overall, if you see eight crores on 380 crores comes to around 2.5 percent. So uh, considering that 7 percent increase annual increment has happened across our group, so it was a saving of 4.5 percent because of the natural retirement and our uh, cost measures. Sure. So, so on the option absolute basis, uh, we should assume that uh, numbers would be in this range only the way they are now. They yeah. come down. Yeah. Obviously, obviously the, the variable and bonus will depend on the growth of the business. But apart from that, other expenses we expect it to come down. Sure. And as the NPS business, uh, you know, uh, last year what we had seen is in few months uh, the the inflows for UPI were lower than the uh, you know peers like LIC, SBI, and uh, you know in in uh, in last call and call you know you guys had mentioned that by the end of March uh, the market share would be restored. Like we'll you know receive the differential amount that we were receiving lower in the month of say October, November, and December. Uh, but when you look at the uh, you know full year number, uh, that reflection is still not there. Can you explain to us you know what has happened in the NPS business and uh, why we had lost that business and like this year as again should we building for lower numbers in NPS? Uh, if you can explain that. 
Konal, the allocation has been restored, right? So whatever the we uh, were basically it came down from 32 percent to 60 percent. It has been restored. Now the details, Sudhir will give it to you. Yeah, as Mr. Rahman said, it has been uh, it has been restored. So in Q4 itself, we have seen an inflow of around 17,000 crore. So we expect that to uh, uh, it will be continuing for the next financial year also. For the next financial year, it, the allocation has already been advised. Yeah, advice also the allocation for the next financial year. So for the few months that we had lo lost the flow, we didn't receive that money again, right? Whatever the location was, their lower location for three months, that cannot be restored. Then thereafter, it has been restored. The trade allocation has started. Sure, got it. Uh, and uh, This is the operator. Mr. Thani may request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Sure, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yashudan from PPFAS Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So I just had a follow-up question uh, regarding the employee costs. So, uh, I mean, we have to assume that, you know, the costs are somewhat on, going to be on the similar levels. But uh, would we assume that uh, as more of the older people with a higher pay, they resign and the newer joinees with lower pay, uh, they join the company. So the uh, absolute cost would sort of reduce from the, these levels? Yes, I think your perception is right. So in a way, uh, we are to see the cost sort of stagnating at these levels. And obviously the bonus, I'm exploring the bonus pay for now because nobody knows how the AUM is going to be, be like. But apart from that, the fixed costs are going to sort of keep coming down or at least be stagnant. This is yeah, what's Yeah, going. you are correct. The fixed cost will already, if you see, it had got stagnant for the last two years. From the IPO year, it has got stagnant and it's going to come down. Okay, okay. Uh, got it. And another question I had was on the international investments. So uh, basically the offshore fund which you guys have, so is that sort of helping, you know, the uh, because the remittances are sort of not allowed as per the RBI guidelines. So it, to some extent, is the offshore fund helping? Come again, your question is not clear. So basically, RBI has issued these guidelines where foreign remittances are not allowed. And uh, the entire industry was sort of waiting on, you know, the uh, limit extensions. So you guys have, have also been running an offshore uh, funds, right? So is that sort of helping to uh, access the international investment side? Yes. No, there are two different things. This limitation is the Indian money going, going outside. Correct. Our, in our case, we are raising the money outside to bring in the country, right? And we have seen the growth in our AUM. Okay. And so what sort of uh, yields uh, do you guys earn on that? The MCT, the yield is around 55 base for international business. 55 basis and uh, and Indian yeah. business, you said the uh, the yields are around 41 basis points, right? That that's on a blended basis. Correct, correct, correct. And what it would be simply for equity funds? For equity fund, uh, for uh, uh, domestic or international? Domestic, domestic. Uh, domestic is close to around uh, 85 to 90 basis points. Okay, okay. And just one last question. Uh, what sort of funds do you have in the pipeline? Would it be more on the active side or passive side? It will be more on the passive side. Uh, maybe a smart beta kind of a product. However, we have one product gap as far as the multi-asset fund is concerned. There we may launch uh, sometime during this particular financial year. But apart from multi-asset fund, all the fund launches will be mostly on the passive side. Okay, okay. Got it, got it. Uh, that's helpful. Uh, for further questions, I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, three questions from my side. Firstly, uh, on the employee cost front again, could you give some clarity as to what number of 
the employees will be retiring in FY23, and what could be their current uh, cost? That would be one. Uh, second would be uh, on your OPEX, on your other uh, other operating expenses, other expenses. They've also seen a sharp jump. What is the reason for that, and how do we see this trending ahead? Uh, and the last question is on the tax rate, which was significantly higher in this quarter. Uh, what was the reason for that, and what should be assumed for uh, FY23 and beyond? Yeah, I'll, take question, I'll first I'll take question number two and three. Hmm. Or I will go in the reverse direction. Let me take the tax question first. See, if you see that effective tax rate for the full year, it is almost uh, normal that is around 18, 18 and 19 percent, right? For mm -hmm. Q4, there is a jump because of four, uh, basically because of three reasons. One is uh, the business income has been, uh, proportionate business income has been very high on the Q4 rather than Q3. Q3, there was an FMP income, FMP maturity for which there is a, uh, uh, a tax rate of around 11%. So business income was more for this Q4 and uh, the lower taxation income was, uh, was nominal in Q4. Secondly, uh, due to the DT, uh, from deferred tax asset, a change over to DTL because of this FMP maturity. And last reason is because of 6.75% yield in respect of actuarial valuation, the income has increased because uh, previous quarters it was charged around 6.45, 6.4. So this, these are the three reasons basically why the tax has increased in Q4. But if you see the overall 12-month uh, period, it's around 18 to 19 percent. And in respect of your uh, other expenses, uh, if you go by the December figure, December figure of other expenses was 147 crore. So it, that gives us a run rate of around 49 crore per quarter. If you uh, 49 crore into four is around 196 crore should have been the annual expenses. But that uh, annual expenses is around 212 crore. That is 16 crore more. So 16 crore has come from three reasons. One is 7 crore increase in case of trail fees. Trail fees generally on a run rate uh, is 12 to 13 crore we pay for each quarter. That in Q4 was 20 crore in respect of international business because AUM, new AUM has come in the Q4. So 7 crore additional trail fee was paid. Apart from that, uh, 17,000 crore of money came fresh allocation in respect of the retirement business for which we had to pay a PFRDA charges of 2 crore. Plus, uh, you must have heard Mr. Rahman telling that we appointed BCG. So, BCG was paid a fees of around 2 crore in the last quarter. Yes, so, and the rest around 4 crores is a normal uh, expenditure of our uh, digital initiatives which has taken place. So that is the reason for our difference of 143 crore to 212 crore. And the first question was in respect of the uh, uh, retirement figures. Yeah, number of employees retiring in this uh, year uh, and uh, what would be the cost allocated? And also, could you guide us a tax rate for the next year? Yeah, the, the tax rate for the annual will be around 18 to 20 percent. Okay. And on the employee cost, employees, Frank? Number of employees? I'm, I'm Rahman. 96 people will be retiring, and the total cost impact will be around 41 crore over the period of time. One year. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitain Chain from Invesco. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, last quarter, uh, you had said that, that the variable pay that you have allocated for FY22 is around uh, 35 crores. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this quarter, you were saying that the variable pay has gone, gone up in line with the business. But yeah. the ATM is kind of flat QOQ. So, how come so much of change in variable pay in one quarter? Yeah, see, variable pay is based on the KRA of the full year. It, it is not on a particular uh, quarter. And even the uh, investment team as well as the sales team, they are evaluated over the full year 12 months. 
So uh, I'll just give you the explanation for that difference which you are asking. The employee benefit cost of the entire group was 74 crore in Q4 21. The same was increased to 115 crore in Q4. So if you observe that the, there is an increase of 41 crore. During the FY22, a budget of 35 crore for the year was made and a proportionate provision was made 8.75 crore for each quarter. So for Q4, the impact of 8.75 crore plus 70 crore additional provision which was made comes to around 26 crore. And if you remember, in December 20, uh, December 20, we made a provision of 45 crore and then actual payment in March 21 was uh, 38 crore. So there is a minus 7 crore impact. So 26 plus 7 is 33 crore. Apart from that, 2 crore for ESOP amortization, 2 crore for the medical expenses, and 2 crore for the fixed pay. Uh, so overall, that gives an impact of 41 crores. No, so exactly. So when you have a variable pay estimate for the full year, uh, till first nine months, your estimate was lower. Uh, and you had said that it will be equally spread across the year. Uh, so again, it seems like last year, again, uh, this variable pay is really volatile for us to understand. Uh, how, or, so maybe if you can explain it better, how do you... So you, you plan it out for the year, right? So till, till last quarter, you had nine months of performance in front of you and you would have estimated a variable pay. Then suddenly this number changes now, so which is where we are finding it difficult to understand. Yeah, you are right. Uh, so we have decided now that this provisioning we will do on the entire provisioning of this one on the just of the actual basis we will do on the quarter on quarter basis, and it will be reflected accordingly. I would like to submit that the performance of our scheme has gone up substantially, and that has impacted uh, and that we calculate on the yearly basis. That has that is the reason for the high in the higher in the variable pay. But I am very pleased to share with you that the standalone profit of UTI AMC has gone up. I mean, after providing this particular bonus, uh, of, is has gone up from 351 crore to 417 crore. And I am also pleased to share with you that the dividend payout has also increased from rupees 17 per share to rupees 21 per share. And it is important for us, you, you will appreciate and agree that it is important for us to look after the uh, employees this, this, because the entire industry and all, all, all sectors are facing the great resignation era. So it is very difficult to retain the team, but we have been fortunate enough to have the team, uh, stable team with us, both in the investment and in the distribution. Sure. Uh, and another thing was when you were trying to explain the difference between the employee cost of full year, uh, 28 crores. Uh, so you ex you very nicely have given the breakup. But uh, at the same time, you had a 17 crore of benefit also because the ESOP cost was lower this year. Uh, as per your earlier commentary, you had said that the ESOP cost for FI22 was 13 crores. And last year it was 30 crores. So there was this 17 crore of absence of ESOP cost this year. So which means if I adjust for that, then it seems like you haven't got any retirement uh, be benefit which you have been guiding uh, uh, since the IPO. Yeah, see, you have to see the employee cost as a whole because there are actuarial uh, valuations in the so gratuity, leave and cash and pension, all taken into account. Uh, the overall employee cost is what you should look into because each, each a uh, factor has an impact on the employee cost. But the fixed pay is on the down downward trend. Sure, and just one clarification. Sir said that yeah. 96 people will be retiring, and you yeah. said 41 crore of saving over one year. Did I hear that number correct? Because that looks quite high. No, no, 91% is retiring on a full year basis, it will be 41 crore. On a full year basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the employee may retire gradually over a period of time. The total salary cost of that employee is close to around 41 crore. So maybe if I am assuming that it's a linear retirement, you can very well take half of that figure, actually, as a saving in employee cost. So next year, the, the total impact will be to the tune of 41 crore. Yes. Okay, so you continue to guide that the total employee cost, which is around 400 crores, it should remain the same for next two, three years, given you'll have savings, which will be able to offset any potential wage hike that you have to give to, to uh, keep as per the industry standards. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
you are right you are right and we are also looking towards forward for the manpower rationalizations we are not in a position to give you any guidance at this particular point of time but we are seriously working for the manpower rationalization and probably in couple of quarters we may have some policy for the manpower rationalization which will help further to reduce the implied cost and have a better productivity Thank you, Mr. Jain. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, just two, three questions. Uh, first, uh, broadly in terms of the renovation structure which we have, uh, you know, so you know, when we started the year, the whole idea was that we will have a ESOP plan. We kind of had another ESOP plan which we kind of upgraded and. uh the cost itself will keep on trending down and at the same time there's another element of performance link incentive which our communication was would be in the range of 30 to 35 crores even in 22 now if i look at our overall strategy and you know our overall payout structure as well you know we have been quite uh, aggressive lately in terms of yield as well in the market phase and when i comes when it comes to the employee part as well uh the cost structure or the renovation structure seems to be very aggressive or more attractive uh than what you see in the industry uh so just trying to understand you know what is kind of prompting you to kind of uh, you know lay out such a more aggressive payout uh, uh so that is one and when you keep on talking about the kras you know uh, how do you measure those kras so what are the elements you kind of base on so is profitability also one of the kra or uh you know just want to understand in that aspect uh so if you can you know kind of give a more detailed picture uh you know it would be very helpful good without most of the questions we have answered and if you want to have a detail on the kras and other piece i think you you can have one on one conversation with cfo and vinay they are through and they are, of course and deep is there they will give you the complete details of this and what i would like to submit that our our uh, uh, incentive plan is not an aggressive in incentive plan right it is much lower than the industry we are not on the highest percentile of of uh, you know payout we are a moderate and uh, reasonably uh, reasonably in line with the market we are not aggressive and indeed we are not conservative but we are not a, 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 at all aggressive payout master and the details of the kra is that yes profitability also is a part but is it for the senior management team right for the sales team it is mainly the uh, share of wallet and the uh, uh, net sales for investment team is indeed the performance the pl performance and uh, and and uh, and, uh, and benchmark but indeed for the senior management team all the senior management team have a profitability as a target but as you have appreciated that the profit has also gone up substantially particularly the core profit as to be explained the core profit of the sd alone has gone up substantially and these we have detailed in our investor presentation so this viraj hello viraj go ahead yeah so just two questions why i am kind of emphasizing uh, on this a uh, little more uh you know because if you look at our cost uh, employee cost uh, in relation to our um and also especially in absolute basis and if you compare to all the players especially the top 5 in the industry uh there's a lot of uh, excess cost built in into the system for us uh and the i mean the communication at least what a theme that this will kind of moderate uh uh you know in coming years but actually if you see that it just keeps on moving up so you know from an investor it always seems like the cost management per se is not really kind of coming in place for us you know in terms of the projected savings which we are hoping it to be yeah virat that is what uh, in the first uh, answer itself i explained that overall if you see there is an 8 crore uh, increase in the fixed pay cost overall fixed pay which is only 2.5% uh, increase and whereas our annual increment is around 7% so anyway there was a 4.5% saving and this will continue over the years uh, our fixed pay will continue to come down 
that is uh, that is the explanation which i gave gave in the initial part of it like so we are continuously monitoring it and this will uh, already it is stagnant if you see from the ipo year and it's on a downward trend apart from the variable play of, of course this this depends on the, our business growth and business plan and you know just to add the cost as a ratio is actually declining over the last 2 to 3 years so with the growth in the average aum uh, our cost ratio has actually has been improving over the last 2 to 3 years and this year is no exception in fact this year also the cost ratio as a percentage of average aum has actually improved by almost around 4 to 5 basis points Okay. Yeah, and Viraj, if you see our cost-to-income ratio, which was uh, 0.67 bits in FY21, it has come down to 59 bits in uh, FY22, this on the standalone part of it. Uh, two more questions. Uh, one is, you know, you said you paid a fee of 2 crores to BCG. Uh, so what is the scope of service, you know, the project which we have taken the services for? Kind of, you can just give a, some color on that. That is for our company, subsidiary company, UTI, UTI Retirement Solutions. UTI Retirement Solutions currently managing mostly the government sector fund. We are trying to diversify to target the private sector. And in order to have a uh, proper guideline and uh, you know, business plan, we had the services of the UTI, the board of UTI Retirement Solutions had the services of the BCG. So now we have got a business plan and we are rolling it out. We have already obtained the POP license in the name of UTI Retirement Solution. And we are in the process of building the team. Okay, and just last question was on the international business. If you see Q&Q, there is a sharp drop in AUM. Uh, and just want to understand why is that? And relation question is, you know, you mentioned about in other expenses, we have paid 7 crores higher uh, train fee because we have added new funds. but. When I look at the AUM for international business, it's, it's come down from almost 34, 35,000 crores to somewhere around, you know, 27, 28,000 crores. So why, what is driving that gap, uh, drop, and, uh, you know, when we pay the fee, how does it really work for us? Yeah, uh, the, uh, you are correct. The AUM, uh, as of December, was 34,000 crores. It came down to 29,000 crores. It is mainly because of M2M loss, because of... Uh, IDEP, which is a nine, uh, out of uh, 29,000 crore, IDEP itself is around 10,000 crore fund. So M2M uh, has impacted that, and our money has also come in Q4, for which we had to pay our trail fees, which I told you. So the, this is mainly because of the uh, uh, M2M uh, impact. So of that 29,000 crores, how much would so you say IDEP right now is 10,000 crores and. The rest, 19, 20,000 crores, how is that distribution? And same as for IDOF, uh, how is the distribution in terms of investor base? Is it kind of, you know, the client concentration is too high because a uh, few years back we had faced a similar problem when one of the large investors kind of pulled out in one of the international funds and we had seen a sharp decode. So any perspective on that? No, we have a broad investor base. These are all high net worth investors of European countries and uh, European banks from Switzerland, Paris, France, London. So we have a broad investor base. And uh, this is, uh, and the, uh, other than 10,000 crore, it's uh, the, the balance, 19,000 crore, is 30% is other equity funds and the balance is there. Thank you. Mr. Viraj, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Aditya Jain from City Group. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so you could touch upon the operating yield, which is up QOQ versus the decline that we'd seen in the third quarter. Uh, so you already mentioned the uh, equity yields on the total book, which was 85 to 90 basis points. If you could talk, talk about the incremental yields uh, that were observed in 3Q and versus now, um, and uh, so you know, so the increase or the the normalization which has happened, um, do you expect it to sustain going forward? So we have uh, given a guidance that for the full year we should be closing close to around 41 to 42 basis point. Q3 decline was on account of various reasons because we have an NFO. Uh, then uh, uh, obviously uh, even the passive fund uh, uh, inflows have been at a substantial rate and uh, our ratios of gross sales to uh, net sales has actually also increased. 
So uh, as I stated in the earlier call call as well, uh, Q-Port is normally uh, a period where tax-saving products where the yield are slightly higher is being sold very aggressively and that's why uh, that has helped to push uh, our overall yield close to around 41 basis points. Got it. Uh, but incremental yields would still be uh, below 85 to 90 basis points. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is true uh, for the entire industry. The incremental inflows will be uh, lower as compared to the top area yield of 85 to 90, depending on the sharing formula with whom we are uh, mobilizing it. So as uh, communicated earlier, the sharing ratio is in the range of around 50 to 80 percent of the total exchange ratio uh, between the ISAs and the big national uh, bank or a distributor. Right. So then the 41 basis points guidance is based on uh, mixed change as well as maybe more share of direct. Uh, that's the right understanding? Yeah, correct. Okay, got it. Um, and then just uh, uh, one clarification. Um, so earlier we used to guide towards 60 to 70 crore of savings over three years of so or so. Um, so the 41 crore number that you mentioned, um, so, uh, so essentially a big chunk of the 60 to 70 crores is expected to come in FY23 itself. Uh, is that the right way to look at it? No, the 41 crore will actually come over the entire year. So uh, depending on the uh, month in which the employee is retiring, so for the full impact of 41 crore, that will be visible in uh, FY23-24 only. FY22-23, the, depending on the month in which the employees are retiring, the entire benefit may not accrue. It may be uh, on the conservative estimate, you may take as a half of that 41 crore. Correct, perfect. That, that is to understand. Just lastly, if you could tell us the period and numbers by uh, asset class. Period and number by asset class. Just You want quarterly average or closing enough? Yeah, closing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, our closing area, Madam, 34th March was 2.20 uh, lakh crore. Uh, equity and hybrid fund constitute roughly around 95,788 crore. ETF and index fund at 65,809 crore. Income fund at 15,454 crore. And uh, liquid fund at 43,125 crore. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next question is from the line of Sahaj Mittal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, so two questions from my side. Uh, so, first was on the tax rate, but I couldn't quite understand the, the reasons for such a sharp increase in the tax rate for this quarter. Uh, so, if you could just repeat that. And uh, for the next two years, sort of a run rate should we ex uh, should we expect on the operating cost uh, front uh, if it gives some guidance uh, given the kind of sharp increase in this quarter? Yeah, uh, the, uh, the first question was in respect of your tax rate. Uh, as I uh, I will just repeat it again. The tax rate has increased for Q for the. That, uh, for the full year, you know that it's almost 10, 18 to 19 percent. But for Q4, it has increased because of three primary for three reasons. One is proportionate of business income in Q4 is much higher than the other quarters because other two quarters, Q2 and Q3, lot of FMPs have matured. So th those uh, are taxed at around 10 to 11 percent. But in Q4, the the, uh, the the total income mostly was in respect of business income, which gets charged at 25 percent. And up, uh, and the second point is that the the deferred tax asset has changed to deferred tax liability in Q4. And lastly, because of the actuarial valuation is done on the current interest rate, which is around 6.75. Earlier, it was done at 6.45. So this also had an impact uh, because our income has increased and this has also uh, resulted in an increase of taxation. So these are the primarily three reasons why Q4 the tax rate was uh, higher. But uh, you can always see that for the full year it was around 18 to 19 percent. And in respect of your query uh, regarding the OPEX rate, Yes, we expect the OPEX rate to be around 52 to 53 because uh, for the last three quarters, that is Q1, Q2, Q3, it was around 49 crores. And this Q4, it was, um, it, it was more because of the reasons which I already explained. So we expect a run rate of around 51 to 52 crores for the next year.
so just a clarification on the FMP maturity. So where does this income get clubbed? I mean, I'm unable to understand that bit. So does that get clubbed in the other income, or in, uh, where do we get to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it gets into the other income part. The sale of service is totally ANC fees which we receive. The uh, the M to M loss and gain and income from our treasury is part of the other income. Yeah. So what I see is that there's a drop, there's a net uh, loss on fair value change in other income. So I mean, how could that result in a higher tax rate in this quarter? No, no, this, that that is because of the M to M loss. The M to M loss is something different. So where does this income get? Uh, M to M loss is totally notional. No, but the income from this uh, maturity of second team, where could we see this in the financial statements? Or uh, if you would uh, read it, right. income from investments. Huh? See, core income is only of the uh, the the fees which we receive, the asset management fees. I, I feel in the if you see the investor presentation, it is clearly mentioned over there. The breakups are already given in the investor presentation. Okay, sure, sir. I'll just uh, check and maybe I'll get back to you offline on this. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks yeah, for this. this is page number 35 is all given. If you see the page number 35, the, the breakup is given over there. Sure, sir. Thanks. I'll maybe check and I'll uh, check with you offline. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last question from the line of Akshay Chen from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, so I had a, a follow-up question on the international agent part. So you said that you know uh, your uh, trail fees is higher by seven crores because of the higher net inflows uh, in the international agent. So can we get the quantum of the net inflows because you know the MTM uh, loss of six thousand odd crores plus net inflows of say uh, excess amount uh, seems to be pretty high. Yeah, see, uh, that is what I told you. That is IDEP, which is around 10,000 crore, plus the other equities are there, which is around 4,000 crore, and the balance is dead. So, uh, mm -hmm. in the last quarter, the trail fees is a continuous uh, uh, on, on, the, on the business, right? The money which, mm -hmm. has come, uh, which has come in the month of March, you will see the accrual part of it will happen in the next year. Okay. Uh, so See, that, so, is why, that is why if you see the, this uh, international fees, which was 65 crores in FY21, and mm -hmm. it has increased to 127 crores in FY22. Understood. So, so next year also. Mm -hmm. like. What should we take the run rate for the revenue uh, next year? So this 127, uh, what should we build in, say? Uh, should it uh, go up further? Or uh, this has you know, reached its limit? Yeah, I, I feel it should go further because uh, UK International has plans to launch two new schemes where we have good investors uh, lined up already. So we definitely uh, perceive that there will be a growth in the revenue income of UK International. Understood. And sir, uh, you mentioned that uh, your trail fees has increased to say around 20 crores now because of the higher uh, trail fee of 7 crores. So should we take uh, this uh, run rate uh, going ahead? This 20 crore will be recurring from now on. Yeah, the, the, the de definitely. Uh, uh, it, it depends on the on the business how it will be, but it, it because of the new business it may increase also, right? Because the new two funds which are being launched that also will have a trail fee, so definitely. But it will go in tandem with the increase in revenue. Understood. Understood. And sir, uh, just uh, one more question. So you said that you know the annual cost uh, savings uh, will be around 41 crores. So for example, for F23, it will be say uh, if we take the F23 part, it will be say around 20 crores. So what is the replacement cost uh, for these employees? Not much. It will not be much. We already have uh, recruited a lot of management trainees, and they will be in a position to uh, uh, you know supplement. I'm not expecting more than 10 percent. 
or the substitution cost. Yeah, uh, just to add, if you listen to our earlier calls, like in March 20, we have already inducted around 150 people, and even March 21, we inducted these race graduates and whom we have groomed up to take over these retirement cases. So we don't expect uh, much cost to rise at all. Understood. And so one uh, last question, I missed uh, one of the part of the other expenses uh, you said. So there was a last component of around 4 or 5 crores. Uh, so what was uh, that uh, about? Yeah, out of the uh, difference of 16 crore which I explained, 7 crore was 10 fees, 2 crore was in respect of phrase allocation which we have to pay to the PFRD as charges mm -hmm. and 2 crore was in respect of BCG. And the other uh, four to five crores was in respect of the cloud and uh, cloud and Bloomberg and other digital initiatives, because in the in the FY21 there was a free period for that, for which we have uh, to pay our normal uh, uh, usage charges for FY22. So that difference is around four to five crores. Understood. Understood. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Imtiaz Rahman for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, and let me give you uh, two other uh, information. One is this: uh, the allocation from the PFRDA to UTI Retirement Solution will be for the financial year 22-23 will be 32.5%. 32.5%, so one third is, will be coming to us. And so far as the business expansion is concerned of UTI International, we have a business plan in place. We are opening our, uh, very shortly we will be opening our office in Paris and we will be targeting more clients. And thank you very much for the active participation and uh, please continue to support UTI and thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of UTI Asset Management Company Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.